economic atheist, claims that God is in their heart, claims that they have a concern for the kingdom of God, and yet none of their treasure, none of their money reflects where their mouth is. When we spend our treasures, not just money, but our time and our talents, in things that do not reflect a concern for the kingdom of God and for the people of God, we are living as economic atheists. We're saying with our mouth, I care about God, I love God, and I love uh, his people, but if there's no material behind that, if there's no money behind that, your mouth is somewhere, your heart is somewhere else, and your money is really revealing what matters to you. How about this? A liturgical atheist, talking about worship, talking about coming together as a congregation to exalt God's name. To be a liturgical atheist happens when our worship has been planned for people rather than for God. When you plan worship or you plan a church for people rather than God, who are you really serving? Who are you really bowing down to? And so let's ask this. Anytime we come in a situation, in a, in a circumstance where we're, we're called to worship, has this worship been planned for man or for God? Has this worship been decorated with trappings and with um, different elements that will please people? Or will it, by God's grace, be acceptable and pleasing to God? Here's a good question. How comfortable would a demon be at Salem's worship service? How comfortable would a demon be? And you could reply that to any church, any setting. If the, que if the answer is a demon could be reasonably comfort comfortable here, we've done something wrong. We've planned a service for man. We've planned a service for comfort and for ease and for uh, seeking out uh, people's approval rather than worshiping in the beauty of holiness and in righteousness where sin is rebuked and where the saints are actually equipped for the work of ministry rather than entertained, rather than made to feel good, rather than get a uh, a moral boost, but actually worshiping the Lord. R.C. Sproul said, where there is no reverence, there is no worship. And so that would be an example of being a, a liturgical atheist. We say we're worshiping God. We might be convinced of it in our minds. But if practically it is not lifting up God's name and for the glory of the Holy One, then really we're worshiping like an atheist. Here's the last one an interpretive atheist, an interpretive atheist. This goes back to what I mentioned earlier. When we twist the scriptures to our liking, rather than let the text speak for itself, then we make ourselves the authority and say that the Holy Spirit who inspired the scripture has to follow our lead. This would be an interpretive atheist. You, you say it's the word of God, you pay lip service to the word of God, but ultimately, you're going to cram and make it fit whatever your preconceived notion was when you started. That is to read the Bible like an atheist. When we twist the scripture, when we ignore the scripture, when we take the scripture to be something we can manage, something we can deal with in our own human reason, and our own human ways, then we have committed a great wrong, even in the very practice of interpreting God's word. Oh, there is one more, an ecclesiastical atheist, an ecclesiastical atheist, or this would be an uh, ecclesiastical agnostic. This would be a Christian person who confesses Christ, but rejects the church. This would be someone who, who claims to know Christ, but they want nothing to do with the church. They, they might say something, it's just me and God. They might say something like, it's just, uh, I'm a lone ranger Christian, and I don't need the church. The church is wrong. The church has hurt me. Um, and they live their whole life outside of the embrace and the, and the warmth and the love of the church. This would be an ecclesiastical atheist because they're, they're saying something about the Lord. And I'm glad that they, uh, they, they have a relationship with Jesus but they can't reject his body. They can't reject his people. 
to do that is to become an ecclesiastical, a church atheist. But he, Jesus himself said, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. So what might be a solution?